In this PowerPoint, we're going to explore the relationships between Gibbs free energy, equilibrium, and electrochemical cell potential. In the previous PowerPoint, we learned that spontaneous redox reactions can be characterized as having a positive electrochemical cell potential between the reduction and oxidation half reactions. In other words, E sub cell is greater than zero. From the last unit, you should also remember that spontaneous processes result in a reduction in chemical potential energy, or a negative value for the Gibbs free energy change, delta G. From our study of equilibrium, we also know that reversible processes in which the forward reaction is favored, which happens when the forward reaction is spontaneous, these processes will have an equilibrium constant K that is greater than one. This is because the reaction proceeds until there are more products at equilibrium than reactants. We also know the reverse relationships. Non-spontaneous redox reactions will have a negative electrochemical cell potential. The change in Gibbs free energy will be positive as potential energy increases, and for reversible reactions in which the forward reaction is non-spontaneous, we'll have a K value that's less than one, as there will be mostly reactants at equilibrium. K values less than one also imply that the reverse process is favored. Now, since all of these are ultimately indicators of spontaneous or non-spontaneous reactions, we should be able to connect them together, and we can. So let's start with the relationship between electrochemical cell potential and Gibbs free energy. And remember that uh, the E sub cell is the standard cell potential of a redox reaction measured in units of volts. And this standard unit for electrochemical potential, the volt, is actually a measure of potential energy in terms of joules per unit charge, or coulombs. So joules per coulomb. The standard Gibbs free energy change for any reaction is actually a measure of potential energy, usually in joules or kilojoules per mole of reactant. So we have two related units, and we simply need to convert from joules per coulomb to joules per mole. Now, to do that, we need to know how much charge is actually being transferred in a redox reaction per mole of reactants. And the charge transferred is actually determined by the number of electrons that are transferred from the oxidation half reaction to the reduction one. So we can figure this out when we break apart our redox reaction into its separate half reactions or half cells and look at the balanced number of electrons between those two half reactions. So we actually need to assign a charge in units of coulombs to the number of electrons being transferred. And the easiest way to do this is to use Faraday's constant, which simply gives us the total charge for one mole of electrons. It's 96,485 coulombs per every mole of electrons. So to convert from E sub cell to delta G, we can take our standard electrochemical cell potential measured in units of joules per coulomb, multiply this by Faraday's constant, which is the number of coulombs per mole of electrons, and then multiply by the number of electrons, the moles of electrons transferred in the redox reaction. Our units will cancel out ultimately to give us joules per mole, what we need for our Gibbs free energy change. You'll notice that in this formula, we also have a negative incorporated into it. This is because uh, we know that uh, spontaneous reactions have a positive E sub cell, but a negative delta G value. So we will need to flip the sign between E sub cell and delta G. You'll also notice the degree sign superscript. As long as our standard electrochemical cell potential was measured under standard conditions, the delta G value that we calculate in this way will also be considered the standard delta G for the reaction. 
In the last unit, we also define the relationship between the standard Gibbs free energy change for any process and its equilibrium constant K. So we said that the standard Gibbs free energy change is equal to the negative of R, which is the gas constant in unit of joules per mole Kelvin, times temperature in units of Kelvin, times the natural log of K, which is your equilibrium constant. If we set this equation equal to the one we just defined relating Gibbs free energy changes to electrochemical cell potential, we can then figure out the relationship between the equilibrium constant, K, and the standard electrochemical cell potential, E sub cell, for any particular redox reaction. So what we get is the negative of the number of electrons, N, times Faraday's constant, times the standard electrochemical cell potential, E sub cell, is equal to the negative of the gas constant, R, times the temperature of the reaction in Kelvin, times the natural log of the equilibrium constant, K, for that reaction. We can actually rearrange this equation to solve for one side or the other, and a common way of doing that is to rearrange to solve for uh, the standard electrochemical cell potential, E sub cell, and that's e going to be equal to the positive value of R times T divided by N divided by F times the natural log of K. So this is a classic way of representing these relationships as a triangle, and we now have equations which will allow us to solve for any of these primary values, Gibbs free energy change, equilibrium constant, or your standard electrochemical cell potential. So we can figure out any of these values if we have at least one of them. So with this in mind, we can answer questions about Gibbs free energy changes and equilibrium constant for any redox reaction. So for example, let's figure out the standard Gibbs free energy change and the equilibrium constant for this reaction between solid zinc and copper ion in solution. Our first step to do this is to figure out the standard electrochemical cell potential using reference electrode potentials for the reduction and oxidation half reactions. So in order to do this, we have to actually figure out our reduction and oxidation half reactions for our net process, and then find them on a table of standard electrode potentials. We can then subtract what we find for the cathode minus the anode, or for the reduction half reaction minus the oxidation reaction, to get our standard electrochemical cell potential. To break this particular reaction up into its separate half reactions, remember we have to identify what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. We'll start with our zinc. It starts as neutral uh, metal, solid metal, zinc, so an oxidation state of zero, and it goes to the ion with a charge of plus two on the product side. So the charge, the oxidation state, uh, increases, and that's oxidation. That will only call, occur with the loss of electrons. Copper, on the other hand, starts as the ion and ends as neutral copper metal. So we go from plus two to zero. This occurs with the gain of electrons. This is reduction. We separate these into our two half reactions. We'll start with the reduction half reaction, copper two plus, gains electrons. So the electrons are written as uh, reactants to form the copper metal. Our oxidation half reaction is zinc, solid zinc as a neutral, uh, forming the zinc ion and the loss of electrons being shown with the electrons on the product side. Now we're going to look for these two half reactions on a table of standard reference electrode potentials or standard reduction potentials. The reduction half reaction will be the easiest to find because it's going to be written in the exact same form as we wrote for our half reaction for the reduction. So copper 2 plus with our two electrons forming copper metal, and it has an electrode potential of positive 0.34 volts. Remember that the oxidation half reaction is going to be flipped on our table because it's always written in the reduction form. So the uh, products 
the zinc ion and the electrons will actually be our reactants on the table. And that's what we'll look for down here. And we'll find that at the bottom. The zinc ion plus two electrons forms the zinc metal, and it has an electrode potential of negative 0.76. Now, we're going to calculate the electrochemical cell potential as the difference between these two. And it's always, of course, the reduction, half reaction potential minus the oxidation. So 0 0.34 positive minus the negative of 0 0.76. So minus a negative makes a positive. So we end up with 0.34 plus 0 0.76, which gives us a total standard electrochemical cell potential of 1.10 volts. And with a value for the standard electrochemical cell potential, E sub cell, we can now calculate the standard change in Gibbs free energy using our equation that relates those two. So we need to know the number of electrons transferred, and we can look at our half reactions to figure that out. In the balanced half reactions, we've got uh, two electrons gained in reduction and two electrons lost in oxidation. So our N value is going to be equal to two, two electrons. F, of course, is Faraday's constant of 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron. And the E sub cell is what we calculated in the last slide, 1.10 volts or 1.10 joules per coulomb. We multiply all of these together and apply the negative to flip the charge. Notice that our units, the coulombs, will actually cancel out. We're going to be left with units of joules per mole. So negative 2 times 96,485 times 1.10 volts gives us a value for the standard Gibbs free energy change of negative 212,267 joules per mole. This is a large number, so we can convert this into kilojoules by moving the decimal over three places, and it gives us negative 212 kilojoules per mole. Three significant figures reflecting the three significant figures in our uh, standard electrochemical cell potential. Now we can calculate our equilibrium constant K for this reaction using either of these two formulas. So this is the one we learned in the thermodynamics unit that relates standard Gibbs free energy change to our equilibrium constant K. And this is the formula that we just derived for the standard electrochemical cell potential relative to our equilibrium constant K. We're going to use the second one since we're dealing with electrochemical cell potential, and we've just calculated it. And in order to isolate uh, K by itself, that's what we want to solve for, we have to move everything over to the other side and get rid of our natural log. So we'll move our ratio over the other side by multiplying by the inverse. It'll cancel out on the right-hand side. And on the left, we'll end up with uh, the uh, number of electrons N times Faraday's constant F divided by the ideal gas constant R and the temperature in units of Kelvin. And that'll be multiplied by our standard electrochemical cell potential. We'll get rid of our natural log by raising everything to the base E. So we do it on this side and it cancels out the natural log, leaving us with uh, K, the capital K for equilibrium constant by itself. We have to do it on this side as well. And what it gives us is actually a, um, an exponent raised to the base E, Euler's constant, where the exponent, which is represented in parentheses here, is actually a ratio of all of our different terms. And we can substitute now what we know for all of these terms into the equation. So we know that n is going to be the number of electrons. In this case, it's two electrons based upon our balanced redox reaction. We know Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. We know the standard electrochemical cell potential because we calculated it as 1.10 volts or joules per coulomb. Our R value is going to be in units of joules to cancel out the joules in our electrochemical potential. So that's 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And our temperature is given to us in the problem as 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298.15 Kelvin. 
So here we have the rearranged equation with all the appropriate variable values substituted in. This is a really unwieldy exponent, you can tell, and it's going to be easier to reduce this exponent to one value and then do the e to the x function on your calculator. So we can enter in um, this ratio, simply what's in parentheses here, into your calculator, and it will reduce to 85.6323 So I'm carrying a lot more decimals than I need, but I'll wait till the final answer to round. Now notice what happened to the units in this process. Our coulombs canceled out. Our joules are going to cancel out. The moles will cancel out. And our Kelvin also cancels out. So we're actually left with a unitless exponent value. We do e to the x and raise this uh, uh, value uh, to the x exponent in our calculator, and we get a k equilibrium constant value that's really large, 1.55 times 10 to the 37. And I've rounded to three significant figures here to reflect the three significant figures in the standard electrochemical cell potential. That's our starting point for this. So this makes sense though. We have a very spontaneous process indicated by a relatively large value for our electrochemical cell potential, 1.10 volts, positive value. A relatively large Gibbs free energy change of negative 212 kilojoules per mole. This means that the Ford reaction is very spontaneous and we will end up with a lot more products at equilibrium than reactants. And that is reflected in our very large equilibrium constant value K. So we have one last equation we can derive from our Gibbs free energy relationships, and that's the Nernst equation. This is an important relationship which allows us to relate our cell potentials measured at standard conditions to the cell potentials we'd observe at concentrations and temperatures other than standard conditions. So to do this, we're going to look again at a relationship that we learned in the thermodynamics unit. Remember this. It allowed us to calculate the Gibbs free energy change for any reaction at non-standard conditions using the standard Gibbs free energy that we could calculate from standard reference values. We modified it with Q, which is simply the reaction quotient for the process. And remember that the reaction quotient is the equilibrium expression for that reaction with the actual concentrations or pressures that we're dealing, in, dealing with in our system substituted in. All right, so it allowed us to examine the effect of non-standard standard concentrations on the spontaneity of any particular reaction. Now, if we substitute into this relationship, what we've derived for the relationship between Gibbs free energy and electrochemical cell potential, we can actually derive the Nernst equation. And we're going to use this relationship for both the non-standard delta G and the standard. The difference being that for the non-standard delta G, our electrochemical cell potential is going to be the non-standard one, so without the degree superscript. For the standard delta G, we use the standard electrochemical cell potential with the degree superscript. Now we can rearrange this to get the non-standard electrochemical potential, E sub cell, on its own by dividing both sides by the negative of N times F. When we do this, we get this relationship. And this is the Nernst equation. The non-standard electrochemical cell potential for any redox reaction is equal to the standard electrochemical cell potential that we can calculate from standard electrode values minus the ideal gas constant R in units of joules per mole Kelvin times the temperature of the process in units of Kelvin divided by the number of electrons transferred between oxidation and reduction half cells and divided by Faraday's constant. 
and that will be multiplied by the natural log of Q, the reaction quotient for this particular process with whatever non-standard concentrations we have substituted in. Let's use this equation to calculate the cell potential for the redox reaction that we've looked at earlier. So this is between zinc metal and copper ion. We're going to deal with non-standard concentrations though. We'll have a copper ion concentration of 2.0 moles per liter and a zinc ion concentration of 0 0.010 moles per liter. So it's no longer one mole per liter, what we expect for standard conditions, and this is going to influence the electrochemical cell potential between our two half cells. So the first step in this process will be to determine our standard cell potential and N, the number of electrons transferred in this reaction. We've actually already done this in the previous example. So this is the same redox equation we used. I'm just going to carry over the values that we used for the last set of problems. So our redox reaction, um, our reduction and oxidation half reactions are separated out here, and we can see the number of electrons transferred. We figured out was two, so two electrons for N. We also used our standard electrode potentials uh, to calculate uh, our standard electrochemical cell potential as 1.10 volts or joules per coulomb. We also know the other constants that we use in this process. Uh, F is Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron. R is the ideal cast constant in units of joules per mole Kelvin. And our temperature is given to us in the problem as 25 degrees Celsius. In Kelvin, that's 298.15 Kelvin. The last thing we need to figure out is our Q value. So Q is the equilibrium expression for the reaction with our actual concentrations, our non-standard concentrations substituted in. Now, we have to look at our balanced chemical equation to figure out the equilibrium expression. Remember that it's products over reactants uh, raised to their coefficients. So everything is one-to-one -one in this relationship, so we're not going to have any exponents. But in terms of the products and reactants that we include, we only include gases and solutions. So we're only going to include the aqueous terms. We don't have any gases here, so just the aqueous terms. The solids, solid zinc and solid copper, are never included in equilibrium expressions. So our Q is simply the concentration of our zinc ion over our copper ion, our product over our reactant solution. So we substitute in the uh, non-standard concentrations given to us in the problem into our Q expression, and we get uh, 0 0.0050 for our Q value. We can substitute all of this into the Nernst equation. And we have a really complicated second term here. The easiest thing to do is to take the natural log of 0 0.0050 in your calculator and then multiply it by this ratio term. So multiply that by 8.314 times 298.15 and then divide by 2 and divide by 96,485. And that should actually reduce to just negative 0 0.068. In terms of the units, uh, notice that our moles are actually going to cancel out here, and our kelvins will cancel out, but we'll still have joules and coulombs, and that's the same unit as we have on our standard electrochemical cell potential, um, the 1.10 joules per coulomb. So these terms, the units will subtract out easily. Um, a negative minus a negative adds together and we end up with 1.168 joules per coulomb. So in terms of rounding, this is subtraction is the last operation that we do. So we're going to look at the number of decimal places. That's the rule for rounding to the correct number um, for subtraction or addition. We have two decimal places in our standard electrochemical cell potential. We're going to round so that we have two decimal places in our final value our non-standard electrochemical cell potential, so we round to 1.17 volts. So in summary, 
Our standard electrochemical cell potential can be related to standard Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant, capital K, for any redox reaction. The electrochemical cell potential, E sub cell, at non-standard conditions can be calculated using the Nernst equation.